Well, welcome back, beloved ones, to another episode of Digging Deeper. And as always, thank you for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. And today, I want us to dig deeper into what we learn about good works from Ephesians 2, verse 10. We hit on this briefly in the sermon this past Sunday, but it is worth a closer look because I think one of the challenges we all face to some degree or another is that we have a self-oriented view of good works where we think, well, I'm the initiator of the good work. You know, here's what I'm going to do. Here's my plan and how I'm going to accomplish it. Or we think we're the determiner of the outcome. We're in control of what the outcome is. Here's what I think the outcome should be, and, and here's what it's going to look like. And then often God is brought in after the fact and put in a sort of supporting role where we say, okay, God, Here's the plan. Here's what I want to do. Now, I need your help to accomplish it. And maybe that's a bit of an extreme example, but I bet we all struggle with at least some elements of that kind of thinking. And verse 10 is so essential because it counters this self-centered and self-oriented view of good works. In fact, verse 10 saturates every aspect of good works with God himself. And that's what I hope to show you here. Verse 10 infuses a God-centeredness into every part of our understanding of good works. And I would suggest practically speaking that it is only when we get a hold of this God-saturated view of good works that we will be able to derive our greatest joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in them. Because what happens is we start to look at God in the good works and not ourselves. So with all of that said, let's jump into verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Now, I've given us a little bit of head start here. I put good works, encircled it. That's what we're thinking about. But let's start to fill in some of the, uh, some of the thoughts here. Good works. Let's first emphasize this. These good works are God-prepared. We learned that right here. These good works which God has prepared beforehand. And we could put it this way. They are foreordained. That's the idea behind prepared beforehand. They have been prepared in advance. And like I said in the sermon this past Sunday, I think we're on good biblical ground to say that these good works were prepared before the foundations of the world. But very practically speaking, this makes it very clear, these good works are God's idea. John Calvin put it this way, he said, these good works spring forth from him. They have to be, they're ordained before the foundations of the world. Where else are they going to come from? They spring forth from him. They spring forth from his character. God is the initiator of the good works. God is the author of these good works. They are God prepared. Now, by way of direct implication, this allows us to say something else about the good works. The outcome is God determined. The results are God determined. This must be the case. Because if he foreordained them, if he prepared them in, a, in advance, then it was with a particular outcome in mind. That is to say, there is something particular that God determines to accomplish with these good works. And that's so important for us to understand because quite often we want to say what the outcome should be. We want to be in control of the result. And if that particular result or outcome doesn't happen, then we automatically think, well, that effort was a failure. When in fact, 
God is likely doing something we never imagined. He's bringing about a result we couldn't have conceived of, and we didn't know he was doing at the time. So you can't base whether the work was good or successful or worthwhile based on the result you thought it would bring. By direct implication, it is God who determines the outcome. If he foreordained the work, then necessarily he determines what the result should be. Now let's think about this. We can go even further. By whom are these works carried out? Those whom God has caused to be created in Christ Jesus. You see the word created here, created in Christ Jesus? It's in a passive form, caused to be created. We are his workmanship, Paul tells us. We are, we are of his making. We are his creation caused to be created in Christ Jesus for good works. So think about this. Practically speaking, any ability or wisdom or resources we have to accomplish the good works God has prepared, well, that ability, that wisdom, that resources, and anything else are a result of our being a new creation in Christ Jesus. And notice this. We'll put this down here. These good works are so that we would walk in them. This is, this is the course God has set forth for those who are new creations in Christ Jesus. Uh, think about it this way. We used to walk in trespasses and sins according to the course of this world. Now, we walk in good works, plural, we walk in them, and collectively, these good works make up the new way of living God has set forth for his people. And so, as we see this diagram in front of us, here's what we are seeing in verse 10. As we think about good works, they are authored by God. They are carried out by those whom God has created. These good works are the new course of life God has set forth for his people. And these good works yield the result or the outcome God has determined. So that at any point you move in thinking about good works, you are always going to be directed back to God and the new life that he has given us in Christ Jesus, so that the good works glorify him and him alone at every point. They keep pointing back to him. And this fits in right in line with what Jesus taught us when he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And what's the result? That they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. The good works are always going to point back to him any way you turn, every way you look. Verse 10 gives us a God-centered, God-saturated view of good works. And ultimately, when we see it this way, when we understand good works in this way, I think that's where we're going to find great joy and fulfillment in them because we are seeing his glory put on display. Well, let's close our time together with a prayer. Father, would you continue to shape and mold our thinking in every area of the Christian life to be centered on you in all ways and in all areas, including how we think about good works? Father, you know our tendencies to make everything about us, but in reality, it's always all about you. We thank you for the new life that we've been given in the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is in his name that we pray. Amen.